Today I'm going to talk about SHR. Uh, I'm going to ask the question, just how good is it? So what is SHR? Well, normally it describes uh, what is known as super hair removal. Uh, it uh, usually is used with a diode laser or an IPL system. Uh, usually it's a, a sweeping motion where the handpiece is moved up and down the treatment area fairly quickly and it's usually described as pain-free and quick. So I want to investigate uh, these claims. Typical settings for uh, this kind of uh, approach, the devices are usually set to anywhere up to about 20 joules per square centimeter. Uh, the pulse widths are typically quite short, uh, usually no longer than 10 milliseconds. The repetition rate or the hertz is usually fairly high, maybe maybe 10, 12, something like that hertz. But what we have to do is we've got to get the right temperature time combination in the hair follicle germ cells to generate good results. If we don't get that correct combination, then it's very difficult to, to completely kill those cells. If you do the, uh, you do the science, it'll tell you that we need to employ a range between typically 20 to about 100 milliseconds to properly cook those uh, stem cells. Um, if, if, the, if the cooking time is too short, then uh, you, you'll not cook all of them. You may cook some of them, but not all of them, and the follicle will survive. Um, also, we find that uh, the fluence needs to be in the range of about 20 to 50 uh, joules per square centimeter, or thereabouts. This is the, the cooking temperature. So it's a case of getting the correct temperature applied for the correct length of time. It goes, the same goes for whether you're baking a cake or boiling an egg. If you don't cook it for the right time at the right temperature, it won't cook properly. Uh, we also have to consider that um, we must apply good skin cooling at the surface to minimize any unwanted damage in the epidermis and the upper dermis. If you don't cool properly, um, you could easily induce uh, damage or even potentially scars. And the thing about thermal pain is that it triggers at around about 45 degrees Celsius. This was um, this came out of research from NASA a few years ago, and uh, and they found that almost everybody they, they, they'll trigger somewhere around, around about 45. So that means that um, if you've got a pain-free situation, then your your little thermal sensors. Are not reaching 45 degrees. Now given that your dermal temperature, normal dermal temperature is around about 37 degrees, that's only an 8 degree increase above your normal temperature. So pain-free kind of suggests it's not getting particularly hot there. Is it hot enough? So with SHR, when you're firing the pulses at the skin, this is the kind of layout that you can expect to generate. So these little red um, rectangles represent the energy on the skin surface. And as you scan from left to right and right to left, you're, you're starting from a, 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 a zero position and you're moving into the, the central area and then you're slowing down at the other end. And you stop and you reverse and you come back up uh, the, the area again. So this basically means that um, at the two ends, you're, you're slowing down, stopping and reversing. And in the middle, you're uh, you're flying through because that's where your your speed is the fastest. So what this means then is that you essentially have got uh, different different treatment areas. The the two end areas you could easily have a whole bunch of uh, pulses stacked up on top of each other like this. So they may well be overheated and overtreated, whereas the central area, because you're essentially flying through that at a fairly relatively high speed, then you may easily leave gaps between the the, uh, the shots. So if you're a robot, then fantastic, this would work. This would work brilliantly well because you could then match up your scanning speed on the skin with the repetition rate from the, the laser or the IPL. And if you match it perfectly, then you can cover the whole area um, very consistently and, and uh, hopefully obtain good results. Uh, if you're not a robot, and I suspect most of you aren't, then um, this will be a difficult uh, task to, to do efficiently. So 
in summary, the, 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 the problems with um, this technique is that, first of all, it's very difficult to apply the, the light energy evenly. That's just, like I say, unless you're a robot, it's, it is very difficult. Which means you're going to generate patchy results at best. You'll have areas where you may have some good results and other areas where you have a lot of hair growing back. Typically, in a lot of machines that I've seen, the fluences are too low. So only the, the more superficial hairs, follicles, um, can be um, um, efficiently damaged. Uh, deeper hair is, is just going to be uh, too deep for these low fluences. Thermal pain triggers at about 45 degrees Celsius. So if you're, uh, if you're not achieving um, some kind of a pain sensation, then uh, you're probably way below the, the temperature you need. I mean, to, to, to properly cook or denature the germ cells in, in hair follicles, you'd really need to get, get them up to around about 70 degrees or, or more. Um, the pain free bit is because of the low fluences, so um, if, if it's pain free, then either the, the fluence is too low or your skin cooling is excellent. Uh, one of those two. Um, therefore, trying to get uh, long term results is going to be very tricky with this technique and you may end up uh, with uh, too many repeat sessions. Um, no doubt some of you will disagree with this, that's fine. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments. I would like to see uh, good results. I mean, I really would like to see good results with this, but uh, I suspect there's not many. Um, but if you can show good results, then please post them up and, and let us all know what you're doing and how you're doing it, because uh, I can't see how this technique can work um, efficiently. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, please uh, go to our blog and um, that YouTube channel for more stuff. Thanks then. Bye.